Welcome back, everyone. So, we've thoroughly discussed our casting options for the Chioria Boutique commercial. But the content of the commercial is also important, right? Do you have any ideas? Hmm. If we're making a commercial for Chioria Boutique, then how about we include some event footage of Chiori? Oh! <gasps> Yay! Chiori is actually going to appear in the event for version 4.3. What? Hmm. While the travelers have been able to see her store in the Court of Fontaine, we'll finally get to meet her in person. Yes, I know. Travelers can also look forward to meeting Ayaka and Ayato in Fontaine. Chiori suggested that they should stop by, so here they are. So cool. Hey, this is actually the perfect time for a word from our sponsor. An Inazuma-born fashion icon, Chiori. Chioria Boutique is your one-stop shop for the latest and most influential fashion in Fontaine. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Chiori is acquainted with the Kamisato siblings because she's also from Inazuma. She actually introduced Ayaka and Ayato to Xavier and recommended that they make the trip to Fontaine for the Fontanalia Film Festival. So exciting! Will you tell us more about the Fontanalia Film Festival? Oh, the Fontanalia Festival was established to commemorate the legendary Loch Knights. According to the myths, they went on a quest to search for the Oceanids and eventually welcomed the Hydro Archon Egeria to Fontaine. Mm hmm. It's one of the most important festivals in Fontaine, like what the Windbloom Festival is to Mondstadt and Lantern Rite is to Liyue. Ah, so exciting! Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Fontaine Film Association proposed the Fontanalia Film Festival earlier this year. And during this time, the public may submit films for evaluation. The entry with the highest score will be given the Farina Award by the association. Well, we can see Farina working with Ayaka and the others here. So wait, does this mean that there's a chance that Farina might win the Farina Award? <gasps> okay, now I'm intrigued. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to leave you in suspense. If travelers are curious about what Ayaka and the others are doing in Fontaine or how Farina fared, you'll just have to play the event when the new version becomes available. Hmm. So we know that several friends from Inazuma will be in Fontaine for the Fontanalia Film Festival, but travelers have so much more to be excited about. Travelers will also have the opportunity to participate in a variety of activity booths during the festival. Each one will have a different theme. Ooh. <laughs> ah, so cool. The first activity booth is the Thousand Pace Interdiction Arc Minute Sharpshooting Zone. In this activity, travelers will use the special security and surveillance patrol simulation device to practice targeting and shooting opponents. Yep. Ooh. The special patrol wanted the public to experience how fun target practice can be. <laughs> and the second activity booth is called Trick Shots Tricky Lights. In this activity, travelers will use the studio's special lighting effects to film a fight scene. Take advantage of the buffs brought about by the special lighting effects to defeat an endless stream of opponents and obtain a higher score. So cool. Those special lighting effects are really giving off old movie vibes. Navia's mm. movements are also super smooth. It's all so atmospheric. Oh, for yeah. sure. But not everyone is enjoying the fun and games. Travelers will meet a contract employee at the third activity booth. She needs some help with her demanding client. During the activity Extreme Drive, travelers will help her test out stabilization mecha balls. Look at how the traveler chases after those stabilization <laughs> mecha balls. Okay, I bet that contract employee can relate since she's being chased down by that client. <laughs> totally. Stabilization mecha balls seem pretty ordinary, but they're actually very agile. They'll automatically avoid all testers by moving in the opposite direction of your movement. You can find jump boosters around the testing grounds. Travelers can use them to jump higher and further, which is perfect for quickly traversing to the other side of a stabilization mecha ball. Travelers in co-op matches will have to find a way to herd as many stabilization mecha balls into their target area as possible within the time limit. The more mecha balls that end up in your area, the more points you'll earn. The fourth activity booth is called Into the Frame. In this activity, travelers will get to shoot their own scenes by experimenting with different camera positions and narration techniques. Cool! We get to make a movie! That's yeah. awesome! <laughs> Travelers might remember helping out Xavier with some filmmaking back in Inazuma, but this seems more professional. Wait, maybe this can be the inspiration for our commercial. Oh! Mm. Now that I think about it, a Fontanian man went to Inazuma to shoot a film. I guess international travel can be a source of artistic inspiration. That must have also been true in Chiori's case. 
since she opened Chioria's boutique in Fontaine. Ooh, that could be a strong theme for our commercial. Actually, Ayaka and Ayato aren't the only Inazumans traveling abroad in version 4.3. Kuki Shinobu just arrived in Liyue for her class reunion. Yeah, and Ito decided to tag along as the boss of the Arataki gang. And he brought his Onikabuto with him. I think he plans to train his beetles for battle. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the Arataki Blazing Armor Beetle Battle Boot Camp. That name is definitely very Ito. <laughs> right? <laughs> for sure. And there was also a beetle battle event in version 3.4, right? Ito battles against a super powerful beetle battler. I believe his name was Grandmaster Hanakado. Mm. Yep. Grandmaster Hanakado made an impressive showing during the last beetle battle event. This time, he's made the trip to Liyue with Ito. It seems like the two of them have met a mysterious new beetle battle master. Ooh. What? Who is it? Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. Tell I'm us. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't give that away. Travelers will have to discover their identity during the event. Ah. Aside from meeting this mysterious new beetle battle master, travelers can also look forward to new ways to battle. While the movement and charge mechanics remain unchanged from the original event, Travelers can now also instruct Onikabuto to use Guard to defend against Electro Bullet and Jetstream attacks. Mm. Mm. Make use of the movement, charge, and guard strategies to topple your opponents no matter what they throw at you. Master them, and you'll be ready to tackle the ultimate trial of the strong. Ooh. <laughs> trial of the strong. <laughs> Travelers can look forward to encountering an old friend in the Fontanian countryside. That's right, Ullman came to Fontaine and he brought his treasure map and treasure seeking Seelie along with him. Yay! Our <laughs> mini Seelie friend is back! <laughs> <laughs> so cute! Travelers can help restore the Seelie's vitality by absorbing energy from the locations that are marked on Ullman's treasure map. In return, the Seelie will guide us to the locations of buried treasure. After collecting ancient iron coins during this event, you can exchange them for various rewards, including a mini Seelie in your preferred color. Ooh. Okay, so in the event preview, it looked like some of the treasure is located underwater, but when I first arrived in Fontaine, I discovered that Seelie couldn't follow me underwater. Is this treasure-seeking Seelie different? Uh, that is very observant of you. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> In this iteration of the Lost Riches event, a new mini Seelie named Brilliance will be available. This new mini Seelie can travel underwater. Amazing! Yeah! Treasure isn't the only thing that you'll discover in Fontaine's countryside. You might also come across a mysterious domain guarded by a unique swordmaster who searches for the meaning of battle. During the Dance of Resolute Will, travelers will get the chance to participate in combat challenges. Each challenge stage will contain two rounds. Travelers must select their party compositions before the challenge starts. One of your chosen characters must be used in both rounds, but no other character can be repeated. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. After you complete a Blade Dance objective during a challenge, you will obtain a Heightened Verve buff. Defeating opponents while Heightened Verve is active will grant you more points. And another old friend is returning in version 4.3. That's right, it's Lieben! Yay! Oh. <laughs> and if Lieben is around, then that must mean we'll have a chance to trade a bunch of items for Primo Gems again. Ooh! <laughs> Exciting! <laughs> Okay, so it looks like Lieben isn't the only old friend we'll be reunited with in version 4.3. Several familiar faces will be joining the Genius Invocation TCG. After this update, travelers will have the opportunity to challenge characters around Fontaine. Ooh. A new Fontaine-themed table customization will also be available. Ah, I'm so excited to see players challenge some melusines. I know, so exciting. Mm -hmm. Travelers can look forward to the addition of several new cards, including six new character cards, plus five new monster cards, such as Dvalin, Signora, and Ejdaha, will be obtainable from the corresponding tavern challenges. But that's not all. The Forge Realms Temper event will also be making a reappearance, and there will be an update to the heated battle mode. Be on the lookout for future announcements. There's TCG content to look forward to outside the game as well. The Genius Invocation TCG Asia Invitational will officially begin in January 2024. What? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Travelers can look forward to some friendly competition between 16 of the top TCG players all across Asia. 
I heard they're some of the best in the region. So cool. Be sure to follow the Astro Carnival X or Twitter account to stay up to date on the latest news about this epic showdown. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this is all so exciting! Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, hang on to that feeling because we're taking a short break to look at the next group. Welcome back, travelers! We've introduced a lot of content and we've gotten a ton of inspiration for our commercial. Honestly, our promotion is definitely shaping up. Totally. But before we reveal our new idea, let's dive into the system optimizations that the project team has prepared for version 4.3. Okay. First, we have some artifact-related optimizations to introduce. With an ever-increasing amount of artifact sets to choose from, many travelers may have been hoping for a better and quicker way to filter and locate desired artifacts. After the version 4.3 update, travelers can check out artifact set recommendations for a given character to see what artifact sets active players have been choosing for that character recently. That's cool! Mm -hmm. In addition, an automatic locking function has been added. Now, when filtering artifacts in your inventory, you can lock the artifacts that fit your filter specifications in batches. With the automatic locking function, newly acquired artifacts that fit your locking criteria will automatically be locked when added to your inventory. Oh, that's awesome. Travelers can have up to two preset auto-lock plans for each artifact set. Hmm. Travelers can choose their own or follow the recommended settings summarized for active player data. Since it may take some time to collect the necessary statistics, new artifact sets will not feature recommended locking settings immediately. Okay. Yes. <laughs> of course, if you can lock artifacts in batches, you can unlock them in batches as well. Travelers can look forward to both of those features in the new update. That's not all, though. What? Travelers will be able to sort artifacts by three different attributes. Plus, the artifact enhancement screen will allow travelers to add a greater amount of enhancement materials at once. An enhancement limit feature will also be available. Hopefully, these optimizations will not only make artifacts easier to find, but also quicker to level. Be on the lookout for future announcements to learn more. The project team is always working hard to address your survey feedback. So, travelers should look forward to further artifact-related optimizations in future version updates. Improvements to equipping artifacts and other artifact-related optimizations are all in the works. In addition, the project team has made adjustments to provide smoother ascension and enhancement experiences for travelers. When you level up a character, enhance an artifact, or enhance a weapon, you no longer have to click so many pop-up windows. Oh, that's awesome! As a mm -hmm. new player using a few 1 and 2 star materials to level artifacts, the whole process might feel a bit slow, especially with pop-up windows appearing. Totally. Mm. This new optimization significantly reduces the amount of pop-up windows that we have to click through so travelers can look forward to a much smoother enhancement and leveling process. The next optimization has made it easier to repeat domain challenges. Previously, travelers who tried to continue domain challenges would be sent to the entrance of the domain. Mm. This meant they would have to run all the way to the center to start the challenge. But after this update, travelers who choose to continue in a domain challenge will load right next to the area where you actually start fighting, which is amazing. <laughs> so happy farming, everyone. <laughs> this yes. should make it way easier for players to farm artifacts for Navia. Oh, yeah, <laughs> true, definitely. True. <laughs> In addition, version 4.3 has made it easier to clear your quest backlog. Archon Quest Chapter 2, Act 4, In the Depths, An Unexpected Reunion, takes place in the underground mines of the Chasm. In the past, travelers had to complete the world quests, Chasm Spelunkers, and the Heavenly Stones Debris before being able to proceed to the Archon Quest. In this update, travelers no longer need to complete those two world quests. Mm. Instead, travelers can speak directly to the miner who issued the commission to unlock a teleport waypoint. Oh. It will take them to the corresponding area and automatically trigger the next steps of the Archon quest. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> this will hopefully make it easier for travelers to quickly progress through Archon quests. So cool. So that'll make it significantly easier for new or lapsed players to access the Archon Quest and claim those sweet, sweet intertwined fates as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. For sure. Also, one-click expeditions will be available starting in version 4.3. This will allow travelers to claim expedition rewards and repeat expeditions with a single click. Travelers will also be able to claim processed ingredients and forged items with a single click. Oh, sweet. That's going to make it easier to collect rewards from Catherine. Definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's also a ton of other quality of life improvements in this update. For example, 
optimizations have been made to enemy tracking with the Adventure Handbook, and character selection logic during crafting and forging. In addition, when performing Mystic Offerings, travelers will now be able to add artifacts in batches. There's a lot to look forward to, so be sure to check future announcements for more information. Okay, moving on from optimizations, a new Fontaine-style realm layout will be added to the Serena teapot. Simply purchase the corresponding items from Tubby to unlock it. Oh, it looks like an aquarium. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Travelers can use ocean currents to travel between the islands in this layout. Some islands even have ponds the travelers can use to keep fish. It oh. looks like a cool underwater kingdom. It's just so pretty. I yeah. know. And they'll be even prettier once travelers have the chance to make them their own. Mm. I'm so excited to see what everyone's going to come up with. Mm. Especially my friend's teapots. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you just want to copy their designs, don't you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I knew it. I have another piece of super exciting news to share with everyone. Ooh. Okay, I know, right? The annual Genshin Impact online concert, Melodies of an Endless Journey, is coming soon! Yay! Yay! <laughs> I heard this year's concert is going to celebrate Genshin's classic melodies in an entirely new way.